I think every one of you, at least many of you, have their own image of how the Santa Claus would look like. To me, it's uh, very simple. It would be exactly like Frédéric Rousseau every year, because what better presents than the ones innovated at IRCAM, the Institute for Research, Coordination in Acoustics and Music. Please give a warm welcome to Frédéric Rousseau. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. And I'm going to pretend you, you, it. Yeah. You get started there. Maybe I can just ask you a question while you're getting yeah. started. Uh, well, there's a lot of buzz about the creative industries being even more and more important to our societies, not the least in, in, in the EU right now. Uh, but where would the technological development and innovation fit into that? How does that then influence the, the, the progress? I, I think that the technology is changing the semantic. We made you know, musical instruments doing years, piano, violin, cello, what you want. And now we are making tools. We are making electronic tools. We are not making any more instruments. We are making electronic tools. And that's certainly the main, the main change. It's to give technology to improve um, inspiration, to improve a new way of mixing. Or, you know, it's, that's, for me, that's a real So we'll change. see it. The answer will be in the I presentation. <laughs> Very much looking forward to it. Thank well, you. Thank you. Why? Then the presentation start and stop. Oh. What's going on? <laughs> now maybe I can, while you uh, continue, I'll just want to say that after this presentation, we'll, um, we'll have a break and everyone needs to, to leave the room. Uh, and, uh, of course, for those of you who have tickets for, for the next session with the interview with Mr. Wayne Shorter, you'll be able to, to come back after I that break. Why. But we need to empty he the room. So to he was perfect doing the real soul. And um, let me check why. No, no. So, anyone wants to hear my opening speech? Yeah. I don't know, even, even like this, it doesn't start. Ah. Well, I know it better now. Oh, dear, come on. Okay, then. Then I just restart everything from scratch. It will work. Yeah. No problem. Thanks, Steve Jobs. Um, so I'll give you the introduction <laughs> for the next piece. You, um, we have uh, the the music journalist and uh, jazz musician Miriam Aida interviewing Wayne Shorter after this session, and that is something that we don't want to miss, of course. also having a Polar Prize laureate, not just focusing on the music just for its own sake, but really having the music being part of everything else in the world and drilling deep into what the music can accomplish. And I think that now we're getting... Uh, and I have to say that it's not Frederick's uh, you know what, that's, tech not working. That's but the advantage ours. of technology. So, great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy it. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Um, OK, I'm going to talk about IRCAM. That's it's an institute of research, um, what I call the art of innovation. Then, uh, just to be quick, then we have 160 people working there, 80 researchers, 40 student PhD, uh, 10 administration and technicians who are making more than 100 concerts per year. And we try to, we are certainly the only institute in Europe making a connection between technology and artists. And 
a researcher is making a new technology, he's sending the technology to an artist, the artist is taking the technology and finding all the defaults and all um, the artifacts that you can find back to the researchers, and that's the way how we increase the quality. So then you see all the different departments that we are doing it. Um, I'm going to try to, to talk about these six different points. So the first thing is going, it's a new, a new topic for us, it's a gestural follower. We all have an, a telephone in your hand, you all have you know, new technology that you can find, and now we can start to play uh, for the dancers, for everything. Vo I'm going to talk about vocal synthesis, 3D sounds. Everybody went to the cinema now with the um, Atmos format and coming from Dolby, and we worked on that too. Audio descriptors and how we can describe the content of a song, uh, not manually, but directly by an algorithm, and with the mixing audio and a music game that I keep for the end, like this, we can have fun. Um, gestural follower. Then the first thing that we are doing at the AirCam now is to create spin-off from the research. And we have a certain amount of researchers and PhDs, and after three, four years at the AirCam, they want to cre cre create a proper startup. And then the idea now is that we help them. We give them the technology, they create the startup, we take 30% of the company, like Apple, <laughs> and like this they can start, and they have the technology for free, and they can create, and maybe we can have success. And I'm going to show you two examples. The first example is phonotonic. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah, that's a nice product. We have we have some success with kids. The only thing that you have to do is, you know, being able to move in rhythm. Um, the other spin-off is this one is Muji's. I show that um, that's quite interesting. It's how you can transform any object in your environment as a musical instrument. Then here we are on a tree. And depending on where you are tapping on the tree, it's depending on the sound. And then, let's go. Then the captors is recognizing the kind of movement that you are doing if you are eating the table or just sliding on it. Then after that we can imagine every delirium. You can play on a guitar without strings. So just to try to be quick. But that's another idea of what we can do with Muji's. And um, at IRCAM, as you know, then we have a lot of contemporary composers, and the same technology to a contemporary guy is making this. You see it's two captors on his hand, and depending on how he's making the movement, it's changing the, the, the sound. Then Muji is really successful at the moment. We, I think that we get now one million pounds from England to promote the product and to give the product now and to sell it. Um, another topic, it's really inter interesting and it's really important at IRCAM, it's the vocal synthesis. A quick demo on how was the vocal synthesis in the 1950s. Ah, I don't have the sound. 
Okay. The vocal synthesis disappear. Okay. Right. I'm going to the next thing. Um, how we did that with makes what we call uh, vocal identity or uh, identity converters. And the idea is how I can recreate and resynthesize a voice with a data bank. Then we are taking a, a voice from a guy and we just make a data bank of his voice by phonemes. And like this, we can have a certain amount of data that we can use. And after that, an actor is taking a microphone, speaking, and we transform the speaking voice to the actor voice automatically by algorithm. Then I hope that it's going to work. This film was black and white and silent. This voice doesn't exist before. Then you see, then we know that the film was mute and we completely recreate the voice with the patent voice, the original voice, and we completely recreate it because we knew exactly what Pedan was saying during the, pro you know, during the process, but we just transformed that. We make the same experience with Marilyn Monroe, then she has some private books that she was writing every night. Okay, then, and it's a real interesting work now for that. And after the speaking voice, now we try to work on the singing voice. Then, then now you are going to have the first uh, demo of the singing voice, just coming out from the laboratory. Okay, then the voice was nobody sing anyway, you know, just a machine. Um, the next test um, and the next product that we made is how we can create a choir, 20 men and 20 f female, singing together with only one guy. And the guy that you are going to see, when he gets his two hands like this, is his voice, his proper voice. When he's like this, we had an harmonized 20 female. And when he's like this, we have 20 female plus 20 men. So look at that. Love it. You know? <laughs> that's, that's another uh, kind of technology that we are doing here. Um, I'm going to go quickly to another demo. If the machine accepts it. Okay. This is um, that's the last product, that's the last algorithm that we made. This is for a movie. Then the girl, the actress, is a good actress, but she's really a shitty singer. She doesn't know how to sing. Then you can listen to that. <laughs> and that's normally a movie for, you know, talking about opera. <laughs> Then you cannot keep that. Then what we had, we had to, we asked to an opera singer to sing the real line as it has to be, you know? Better. And now what we did at the AirCam, we take all the musical parameters on the opera voice and we move all the musical parameters to the actress. And this is the actress singing better. It should be better, anyway. <laughs> 
Um, let's go back to this. We work, another topic that here comes is to work about the 3D sounds and how we can then, I, I'm not going to make a demo today, but you know, maybe we can, you know, I can show you the demonstration at the hotel later. But the idea is now we have the five dimension with the five one, seven one, and all the formats that you can have for the cinema. But now you have the Atmos, it means you have this new dimension, it's a vertical sound. Then we create, um, a product that it's quite a brand new product because it's going to be on the market at the end of July. And this is a product that you can use if you are musicians and you can mix in multi-channel. Then you can mix up to 20 or to 64 different speakers in a dome. Okay. Then after that, you can place your instrument where you want. Means the bass drum can be on the floor, the cymbals can be on the top of it. Then the vocals can be at one meter high, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And after that, we are making an encoding and we simulate the 22 speakers in your headphones. And that's really interesting to see how you completely change your way of how to mix music just because you have this new dimension, you have this vertical dimension. For the cinema, it's really interesting. The plane is going to go on top, uh, you know, the footstep is going to be on the floor, and then you have this new dimension to completely change um, the way how you are um, mixing music. This is for education. I'm sorry I'm going quick, huh? then <laughs> I try to get you know, the time. Um, now we have the snail here. The snail is an education product that we sell now for different conservatories. The idea is simple. Each circle is an octave, and it's divided by half tone. Then in the middle of the half tone, you have the quarter tone, the eight tone, and the one sixteen tones. Then you have um, people can now, the children can see what they hear, not only listening, but they can see. Then let's, let's have a quick demo of that. Then you see the thing, to Octave. And what is, uh, just stop here, but what is really interesting in this way of showing music, of mu showing sounds, um, then the big one is the fundamental. Then if you are making one circle, you arrive to the harmonic two. If you are continuing, you go to the harmonic three. Then you go on the harmonic four, then five, and six, and seven, and eight. Then you see the, the harmonic content of a sound. And that's really interesting for kids to understand what the sound is. Is just a simple sinusoidal um, waves, or is that a complex uh, thing? And this is really interesting for kids to understand what the sound is. Um, Another topic is what we call audio descriptors. We worked on that since 10 years now at the Aircam. The idea is we have now, if you go on Spotify, Deezer, or iTunes Radio, you have something like 40 million songs. How can I select what I want? How I can create a playlist, how I, you know, then really reacting to my um, request? Then at the Vuzi Aircam audio descriptors, you just put an audio file in the machine, and the machine is creating automatically by analysis the gender, the mood, if it's calm, sad, exciting, or what you want, um, the tempo, the percussivity index, is that a just a, a song with a guitar and a singer, or is that a really drummy uh, mix? The percussivity, the complexity index, is that just a simple disco, or is that a kind of samba, um, you know, rich in rhythm? Um, and then you have all these parameters, and after that you can make a choice and saying, okay, this evening, I want to pass an evening in C minor. Then you just tap C minor, and you are going to have all the songs in C minor coming up. And that's really interesting for recommendations. We sold that to Universal now, and they have that for worldwide. And finally, Universal called back a few, few months ago saying, you know what, we rediscover certain songs in the catalog that we forgot. Then, because just by, by the musical parameters and not by the rest. And finally, that's another uh, kind of technology that we are doing. Uh, you can see that, and it's just a demo. Um, you have all the parameters here, okay? And then the machine is creating a list of the, the, uh, the songs representing these parameters, okay? Then the blue line, it's always the same thing. Then now we get to similar track, 
and the machine is directly passing to the similar track, okay, going in the same kind of mood. And that's really interesting for finding a song or finding a, creating an evening how you wish it. Okay, then I pass that. Uh, that's really interesting. Um, at the AirCam, we are able to find the following chords of a song. Then we know that you have a C minor, E minor, A, what you want. Then we find that. Then now, if you are finding, you can find a song having these four chords, okay, you choose it in the Beatles catalog, and suddenly you have all the songs that the Beatles use these four chords. And automatically you find. And you can see the chord here. Okay, that's another kind of how to find a song. And you know, if your kid just learn, you know, four chords on his guitar, then you just tap the four chords, and you are going to see all the catalog with these four chords. That's another kind of <laughs> another kind of research that we are doing. Um, and you have, you know, the gender and the mood. Then anyway, it just gives you an idea of all this. Now. Um, we make the same thing. We make the same thing for voices. Um, I know that in Sweden, finally, you, you are always listening to the original um, voice of the film. It's not the case in France. In France, we are making dubbing. You know, that's how you can fuck a film just by the wrong voice. You know what I mean? And this is, we buy the descriptors, we use this just to make a description of an actor voice. And then now, uh, what you are going to hear is that you have the original German voice, and the machine is going to find all the French actors with the same timbre. Okay. Then we search, and boom. Then we have a kid, then you go on search. Blue, and then you have the French. Okay, then normally no more mistake in the dubbing, you know? <laughs> um, I'm going quickly to that. Um, I'm passing this one. I'm going there. We work on the demixing. We have a lot of cinema company wants to demix the whole 1950 movies, get the voice back, you know, to isolate the voices and remaking a 5 1 mix of what you want. Then, here, the first example you are going to hear and take care of the trumpet sound. You don't want to play it, huh? Okay. No, you don't want to play. I don't know what's going on. Anyway. Um, let's go back to this one. Sorry for that. Then you have the voice with the organ. Okay, then we demix it. Works well, works well. Um, well. Here, he doesn't want to play it, okay. I'm going 18 seconds. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you, you know, at the beginning of the presentation, I show you what we can do with the telephone. Um, here, that this is what we plan to work. We work on what we call web audio, then how we can synchronize the web um, to make music from different people on the planet. Here, it's another kind of application. It's how few kids can be in the same room and remix live some music. And we have some telephone making the drums, some telephone making the, the voice, the choirs and everything. Is it working? Yeah. And this one is a drummer. And each movement is precise, okay? And okay, few kids can play in the house, you know, with few smartphones. Alors, now, um, I'm not going to make the demo immediately because we don't have time. I think I, I need to finish. Um, but notice, try to note this web address. Okay, this HTTPS double point slash slash. 
and you can play when you are going to take a coffee. The idea is this one. Then you have a telephone, you connect on any Safari or any navigators on your phone working on iPhone, iPad, or what you want. Okay, and then you are going to find birds or something like that, then you can take a bird sound and you check your phone and then you can find another one. Okay, then maybe you know, later you can create a jungle if you want it. Um, I'm just going quickly to show you um, this, another kind of worldwide presentation. Okay, that's what we call Drop. Drop is a new technology. Yeah, okay. Then, when you are going to Cosima, you are going to find the Drop staff. You choose a color. You type in... Okay, then now I see that I am in Sweden and I'm making the sound here. Then now you have some people on the planet playing with the same drop. Okay, then we have a guy here playing, you know, the same, um, the same software. And then you can navigate on the planet and see who is going to play with you. Then for the moment, it's a kind of, you know, we see that we are located here. And we have this guy here, maybe another. And then this guy is playing, you know, next to the Neil is going to be mixed with my phone. Then now we are two, you are listening to people at the same time. And then you can, what is really interesting, it's the two main sources of sound closer to you are going to be mixed with your phone. Uh, for the moment, it's a quite of, you know, new wave or new age sound, but we try to synchronize everything to be able to play with, you know, kids and friends all over the planet. Uh, this is it. I, I have to finish because you know, Alphonse is going to shout on me and say, oh, you are too long. Uh, voilà, this is a quick, you know, a quick demonstration of all the activities that we are making at the AirCam. You're welcome anyway if you are passing by Paris and I can show you this um, famous anechoic chambers and you can be in this room in the perfect silence and you are going to understand what the silence is and uh, you can make you know, different experiences. Thanks a lot for our... <laughs> Thank you, Frederick. It's a good way of making people hate me, huh? saying that I end all the good presentations. <laughs> but your presentation basically was my wish list for Christmas, just so you know. Okay. So, okay. thank you very much. I can give you some code. <laughs> so, fantastic presentation. Now, we need to empty the room. There's coffee outside.